I feel like I was literally just making a video about the last Sephora sale. It's already springtime, time flies. So if the Sephora sale is going on from now until April 15th, you can use the code YAYSAVE and that gets you varying degrees percent off based on what tier you are on Sephora. Today we're doing a try on of things that I've purchased so far during the sale. I say so far because I feel like every sale I'll make one order, then I'll make a second, and then somehow a third and fourth happens. I have makeup, I have some skincare, perfume, hair stuff, all the fun Sephora things. But if you enjoy this video while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. Here we go. Okay, well this is unintentionally kind of a hair reveal before the vlog that you're gonna see talking about the hair because my vlogs are always like pre-filmed and jumbled together and a bit behind. But the toner that's in right now, like this, the super dark in between the highlights, it fades a lot. Like last time when I got it done, it faded literally like two or three shades or two or three levels. So hopefully it'll fade to just like a cool toned brown, which is what I'm going for. But anyways, so I did mean to uh, last night put on tanner before filming this because I have a lot of like bronzy body kind of products. Some neighbor is cooking something that smells amazing right now. I feel like going into spring and now summer coming up, like now's the time when all the brands launch their tinted products, tinted serums, SPFs, all the good stuff. These are like what I wear on a daily basis now. I normally put on a tinted SPF and then some kind of concealer. So I have two here and then one thing I've been trying, which I'll talk about. So we have the Super Goop Protectant Daily SPF. It's in the shade 22W. Light coverage, natural finish. So I'm hoping that this is like a little bit less glowy than the Super Goop Glow... My brain just malfunctioned. Um, Super Goop Glow Screen, <laughs> because that is ultra glow. But then I'm beyond excited to try this one. This is the Kosas Dream Beam Sunlit. So this is their Dream Beam SPF, which I do have, but I believe tinted and glowy. This packaging is probably the cutest SPF packaging I've ever seen in my life. So I'm deciding what I wanna do here. Should I do half my face with one, half the other just to see? Should I put this on underneath and then put this on over top for now? This one says water resistant up to 80 minutes. Let's see if the Dream Beam on half my face and then decide what the heck to do. Definitely tinted. Okay, so it has the same kind of scent as the other one, which is like a rose scent. It has that waterproof kind of feel. It feels weirdly almost like tacky. It has a definitely a different feel going on than the normal Dream Beam, which is kind of interesting. That one feels more like velvety, silky. This one does feel like a different consistency. It's definitely tinted. Okay, so when I was applying these, you really couldn't tell, I feel like the accurate finish, they just didn't look glowy at all. I'm gonna show you what they look like in good lighting so you can get a more accurate idea because I have used these a few times since filming that and my thoughts are definitely different. So here's the Kosas. Oh, this scent. I can't with the rose. So as you can see, it's actually pretty orange. I don't know why it wasn't looking like that when I put it on the other day, but I have more tanner on right now than I did when I filmed that other clip. And yeah, I just feel like the color is definitely orange. Probably just because the shade is too dark for me. It definitely looks patchy like this is one that you have to really blend into your hairline and stuff because of the shade alone this isn't going to be one i'm using but it definitely looks glowier than you know what it looked like the other day when i was filming i do want to try the super goop on the other side just to see the difference in shade finish everything i have a lot more redness on this side of my face right now so just keep that in mind off the bat this one is lighter you can tell already whoa has a nice scent. It's just like kind of fresh. It's not clinging to any of my, you guys said what it was on a video. <laughs> I need to go to the dermatologist cause I have this like rash thing right here that hasn't going away. But there is some like texture and dryness and it doesn't look like it's clinging to that. Both of them look good, you know, on my forehead area. So let's do the super goop protect tint in better light. So this one I feel like has a nice level of a glow. I feel like it's a satin finish. If super good glow screen was too much for you, this is definitely a few notches down. It doesn't cover, you know, much redness or anything. It says it's supposed to be light coverage. I would agree with that. It does give just like an overall kind of evening of the skin tone, but it's not going to provide any coverage really, but it feels nice and it does like, does dry down kind of. No, it looks like a satin finish and kind of glowy. Like this side is already kind of dried down, which is really cool. So this one so far, I am liking. Just to kind of like even out the tones we have going on, I'm just gonna do some some weird science experiments on my face. So I'm gonna do the super group on the other side, just kind of layer it on. 
just to even out the shade a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same with the dream beam. I'm having an identity crisis because out of nowhere, I don't even know how to say his name. Morgan Whalen, Wallen. That's how not into country I am. I mean, I have like 10 country songs on my Spotify right now. I'm thinking about you on repeat right now and permanently stuck in my head. I am not a country gal, so I don't know what's happening. Just to warm up this side a little bit, I'm gonna take the, whatever this is, Kosas. Oh my God, I just dragged that all the way in my hair. I mean, they're not supposed to like provide coverage really. Both of them are just kind of tinted products, but I would say I'm at light coverage right now. I do want to conceal definitely like up here under my eyes and around here. I've been using this on and off like very sporadically for a couple months. It's the Dior Backstage Concealer in the shade 3C. I just feel like it isn't sticking out to me like one way or another. So I, I'm gonna say that's probably a, a no. <laughs> like don't think it's worth it because you know, I just have other concealers that I'm like fully wowed by, especially considering the price. If you wanna pick up an amazing concealer during the Sephora sale, Natasha Nona, absolutely love this. I'm gonna use this under my eyes today. It's in the shade N3. I use this for spot concealing all over my face as foundation some days. Has good coverage, wears amazing. While those are simmering, I'm gonna put on my brow gel. I'm gonna blend out the Dior concealer down here. I mean, looks like full coverage. Like that just covered a lot right there. I feel like it just doesn't sit as smoothly over the rest of my face as the Natasha Denona while my under eyes are still marinating down there. I picked up the Fleur Vanilla Skin Hair and Body Fragrance Mist. I did just actually today order on their website the Strawberry Perfume. I guess that one isn't sold on Sephora, but I'm curious about it. I just picked up like the travel size. This I've been wearing, I've worn this a few times so far. The first time I sprayed it, I was a little bit underwhelmed. I just was kind of expecting like something else to be in there, but it does just to me smell like pretty straight up vanilla. If you want a vanilla to like mix with other things, like I would spray this on on top of another perfume or in my hair because it says you can use this as like a hair mist as well. If you've tried other of the Fleur fragrances, let me know your favorite. Ooh, that just reminded me, actually adding this to my Sephora cart right now. This is just a Joe brow pencil, but I do wanna repurchase my Rare Beauty brow pencil. I like that enough to where I would definitely repurchase it. And now that the sale's going on, gonna be doing that. I like everything about that one. It stays on well. It has like a angled kind of tip. I feel like I can do my brows really quick. I like the shade I've been using, but while I do my brows, I'll show you a few of the things that are in my Sephora cart right now. I'm gonna be placing another order. So this is a new Sephora collection launch. Their Love the Lift Curling and Volumizing Waterproof Mascara. These kind of wands I usually like for layering with other mascaras. If they have a curled, rubber kind of wand. Sometimes they can be really separating and give some nice separation and curl to a more voluminous mascara. Next up, I'm ordering the Say Slip Tint Radiant All Over Concealer with Niacinamide. I love the Say Slip Tint. I always have to give this disclaimer though, the Say Slip Tint for me, only, like I only love it and it looks freaking flawless with my Haley's Beauty foundation brush. It's like the rounded dome one, I'll link both down below. I don't like using this one with my hands. I like putting the product directly on the brush and then stippling it out. When I do that, I get such an amazing, just smooth skin. This just fully looks like skin. And it's not overly glowy to me where it looks greasy. It looks like just a beautiful, plump, kind of radiant finish. So I am really curious to try the concealer that they came out with. I'm ordering the shade three to use as like a tanner shade. Then we've got the House Labs by Lady Gaga Hybrid Lip Glaze Plumping Gloss. I love the House Labs lip oil. If you want an amazing lip oil formula that's not like sticky or tacky, love the pink one. I'll put the exact shade down below. But this is the plumping gloss. I'm not super into plumping glosses if they have the really tingly, intense kind of feel because I just feel like they don't do that much. Some of them are more noticeable than others though, so we'll see how much of a tingling effect this one has. You're gonna be shocked at this next sentence that comes out of my mouth. I did not order the lightest pink shade, the bubblegum pink. I actually ordered guava, which is one shade up, and it looks like it has, it's like more of a warm tone kind of pink. Hoping this doesn't have any kind of fruity scent. Last thing I ordered is the Bosma Cream Blush in the shade Fuchsia. This looked very pretty, and it just intrigued me because it's a brand that I've never heard about. Goddamn. I um, just realized I actually had a different concealer to try. Can I put concealer anywhere else on my face right now? I mean, I can try it a little bit more on my inner corner. This is the Cali Ray Hideaway Brightening Under Eye Color Corrector. Heavy packaging, wow. I do wanna try this over the Natasha Denona just on the 
inner part of my eye because it looks, like it says, more like a color corrector. And sometimes these really pink tones can be super pretty right here. It almost reminds me of the NYX. Remember when NYX used to have, or maybe they still do the lavender concealer, like the color corrector? Back in the day, they didn't make concealers light enough, so I would mix that in, the lavender concealer, with other concealers to lighten them. And I recently posted this on my Instagram stories, but as I was kind of looking at, oh, also I'm adding to my cart the Urban Decay, the new Urban Decay foundation which is what sparked these little Instagram story slides, but Urban Decay posted, and they're not the first brand to do this, but I was just shopping that foundation and saw photos of models with acne. And I just had like a moment to be like, wow, 10 years ago, like when I was making YouTube videos about acne and you know my Accutane journey and foundations for acne and all that stuff, you would have never in a million years seen a brand on Sephora post untouched photos of someone's skin with acne. Y yes, there's you know still a lot of improvement as far as shades and in a lot of different areas in the beauty industry, but we have come a long way. Things have improved over the years in a lot of ways. Different genders being represented on Sephora, more skin tones, more regularly. Again, still room for improvement, but I do think it's just very cool that now you're seeing photos of unretouched skin, whereas like before you'd have to go on YouTube and even then a lot of people back then were putting like filters on videos and still do or just not you know showing skin in that way at all so yes also adding that Urban Decay foundation to my cart and like I said Urban Decay isn't the first one to showcase you know under eyes and unretouched photos and acne but I was just looking at that product and had a moment so speaking of different skin tones let's talk about a product that uh, I've been testing, I've worn this probably four or five times so far, and I have thoughts. It's the Isle of Paradise Sunny Serum Instant Face Bronzer. So it actually says to just apply this directly to skin, blend or contour using fingers or kabuki brush. Let me just say, this is, I think, for no one under an NC40, maybe even NC45 skin tone. I love the packaging, beautiful packaging, but to me this just feels more like a liquid highlighter almost. I mean, it is extremely glowy. One thing I don't like about the packaging though is the, the pump. It's hard to just get a little bit out. Like you really got to do a full pump. So even if you wanted to use it as like a liquid, very glowy bronzer or highlighter, it's hard to get a little bit out, but can you see how freaking glowy that is? So first I tried mixing this in just like with my normal clear kind of gel SPF and it was definitely too dark, like too dark and too glowy. It looked like very Tin Man. This to me as an all over face product, which is what it's supposed to be marketed as, is way too glowy. And we're talking like glowier than Super Goop SPF. So even toned down with SPF, is a no for me. I tried mixing it in with an SPF that has a white cast because I was thinking like, okay, maybe they'll balance each other out. It did, It, but it gave my face more of like, just like a weird kind of pink tint. I'm talking like even with my tanner shade. I'm gonna show you this product alone because that's how they say to use it. Like I said, mixing it in with sunscreen doesn't do much, so it doesn't really matter either way. I want you to be able to see the color so that if you do have a deeper skin tone, like you can see. Um, yep. Yeah. You can imagine when I put this on for the first time. Do you see how glowy that is though? And I'm not saying in a good way, like picture my skin tone, you know, darker than this and it matching. I mean, it's like a literal highlighter. Like, this looks like 2012, you get the picture. Just for shits and giggles and because I have it here, I'm gonna mix the super goop. I feel like I would fly through this by the way. I guess it has a full fluid ounce, but with a little, I'm just gonna try to get a little bit of the Isle of Paradise. Mix these together and see what happens. Okay. Ooh, that combo is actually looking really good. Like the shade, I mean, definitely glowy. This is super goop level, glow screen level, I mean. I will say this is the first thing I've mixed that in with that I actually like how it looks though. I've mixed it in with foundations and worn it under and then put foundations over top. It is a little bit dark still, but I don't know if I would keep it just for that because I feel like I could just mix in my super goop blue screen that I already have, the darker shade. 
Also says it's a skin perfector plus illuminator. To me, no. <laughs> like it doesn't have any kind of smoothing, blurring kind of properties. This is a liquid highlighter. So I ordered a bunch of new makeup on Ulta as well that I'm gonna be trying in a different video, but I had two powder bronzers for that video. So because I don't have a Sephora bronzer to try for this video, I figured might as well throw in one of the Ulta ones. This is the out of office shade of the Rem Beauty Hypernova satin matte bronzer. I'm gonna be using a new powder blush from Sephora, so all good to go in with a powder bronzer. Usually if I'm using a cream blush, I won't use a powder bronzer. I don't think I got the lightest shade. I think I got one up from the lightest. Okay, now I feel like I'm seeing more of a glow, maybe as the light's changing. I don't know why I just got the urge to smell that. It doesn't smell like anything. I think on my skin tone right now, definitely a little bit dark, but I could see the tone of this being nice for summer. Right now it's looking, yeah, it's looking a little orangey. Actually, it only looks like that on camera in real life. Like when I'm looking into the mirror, it just has like a nice kind of warmth. It's blending out really easily. I'm gonna use a little bit less on this side just to see. It has a very light kind of feel to it. It feels very easy to blend out. There's no like tugging happening. Just because I don't have any kind of like concealer or foundation down here, just to clean it up a little bit, I'm gonna take the L'Oreal powder foundation. It's hard for me to like a warm toned bronzer because I just typically like more red or neutral ones, but this is one of those few shades where I feel like I'm actually really liking it. I would say satin feels accurate. It doesn't look flat matte. This is the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blush. This is a new launch from Rare Beauty, and this is in the shade Happy. Happy is my favorite shade of the liquid blush by Rare Beauty, and you know I love a good luminous blush. You can use it as a natural blush, a blush topper with like a highlight brush. Oof, this is a good soft matte packaging right here. Ooh, yeah. I'm having a moment with this. Beautiful. Look at that. The lightest shade, which is not happy, it was a new shade that they launched, looked super luminous. Right now, that's like light application. I do wanna try to build it up a little bit and see how glowy it gets because right now I would say, I mean, it's luminous. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Yep, it's not sitting bad on texture. Building up this side now. That level of luminosity is really pretty. I'm just gonna throw the bronzer all over my eyeballs. Yeah, there's something with this tone, certain bronzer tones, I just feel like they have the right ratio of like orange and then red undertones, and this is one of those. I'm just gonna take the peachy shade from the Patrick Ta palette just for a little sheen. And then the brown in this palette, the warmest brown, dark brown, and then smudge it. Okay, I just put on, oh my God. <laughs> My uh, hormonal 13 year old. I just put on the Give Beauty mascara. This has been one I've been using a ton lately. I just have been liking the way it makes my outer lashes look especially. Keeping it real natural and basic on, on the eyes. That's all I'm gonna do. So I have two lip liners that I picked up. The first is the Freck Beauty Makeout Club Nude Muse Lip Liner in the shade two. I'm gonna do hand swatches of both of these. I also have a couple other things that I picked up on Sephora that weren't like makeup products, but I'll show you in a minute. And then the Anastasia lip liner in the shade Warm Taupe. This has just been in my cart for forever, and I think it was out of stock last time I went to purchase it during the sale. This is a square lip liner. I like that. Peachier than I was expecting, but could look different on the lips. Ooh already. I can tell this Freck one might be a winner. This has definitely more like pink in there. You know, I gotta do Freck today. I'm really hoping this formula stays on well because the shade of this I love and I can tell I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this. I want to swatch this against my Laura Mercier. Wow, I just thoroughly dug for that. So I mentioned this in March Raves and Rejects. This is the Blissful Blush shade. So let's swatch this on top. I think these are gonna look pretty similar. And then Freck on the bottom. Yeah, that's why I like this shade so much. <laughs> it looks super similar to the Laura Mercier. I would say the Freck has a little bit more purple in there and the Laura has a little bit more of like a peach undertone, like when it's kind of smudged out, but very similar. Yeah, definitely gonna be wearing that a lot. I'm gonna take my Huda, this is actually a cream blush, but it's pretty on the lips too. Also mentioned this in March Raves and Rejects. And then I'm gonna take just a clear glass. This is my Peri Para. I actually feel like I could use a little more bronzer on my forehead. This is that kind of bronzer tone that makes you look like you were just on vacation. 
I think that's why I'm liking it. So I'll take my hair down, but if I have a few more things to show you that I picked up. If you've uh, been on Instagram or TikTok at all in the past like year, I feel like you've probably seen this. I was waiting for the Sephora sale to pick this up. The cool thing about this hair product is that I've seen it, people use it in so many different ways. Like it says, it's a three-in-one styling cream. You can use it on damp hair or dry hair to do a sleek back kind of look. I've seen people use it like on their kids for just kids hairstyles. Prep shiny blowouts, it says. You can also use just mid to ends before blow drying. And for curls, which is kind of mind blowing to me because curly hair products are very particular, you know? So it's kind of wild that you can use the same product for all three of those things. The one thing with this kind of packaging, this is just a personal thing, but I don't like these kind of little twisty tops just because I'd rather just be like a flip cap, but what are you gonna do? Let's see what this smells like. It smells citrusy. Not my favorite kind of scent, personally, especially for hair. I mean, it smells good. It just definitely has like a citrusy kind of scent to it. I'm super curious how this does with curly hair. I immediately purchased this as soon as I saw this on Instagram. It's the Sol de Janeiro Rio Radiance SPF. They actually launched three, I think, different products in this line. There's this body lotion, then a spray version, and then also a body oil that has SPF in it. I love Sol de Janeiro, so I immediately added this to my cart, especially when I saw that it was the Cherry Rosa 87 fragrance is the fragrance of this SPF. So smells freaking incredible. I used this the other day on my chest and it wasn't as glowy as I was picturing it, but let's try it on my arm right now. It has a subtle glow and that's how I felt the other day when I used it on my chest is that it's not super illuminating to where I wouldn't use it as like a body glow kind of product. It smells unbelievable. You can feel it on your skin, which is kind of typical for SPF lotions. I usually do like in the summer, if I'm gonna be outside and wearing a swimsuit kind of thing, I usually do a spray SPF all over. So don't ask me why I didn't order the spray. I think I am gonna also purchase the body oil during the sale so we can see how that is. Speaking of oils, I picked up the Mara Universal Face Oil. I've just heard a lot of good things about this and I picked up the small, like the mini size just to see how it is and it is a pricier face oil. So I wanted to give it a whirl on my skin before committing to the full size. It has algae and moringa, amino acids, antioxidants, vitamins. Yeah, I've just heard good things about this oils. I wanna point out a few of my favorite highlights and just things I'm stoked about that I'm excited to keep using. Both of these excited to keep using more. If I had to choose one right now that I'm leaning towards, I feel like I'm leaning towards the Super Goo, not Sephora, but Ulta, very excited about this bronzer, the out of office bronzer. The Freck Beauty Lip Liner, Love this shade. I just realized I don't even think I said anything about this after I blended it out because I was talking about something else. It did add some nice brightness. I don't know if it's something that, you know, I can't get from like another concealer yet. So we'll see. I'm gonna obviously keep trying this, the Kelly Ray. Rare Beauty Blush. Look at it in the pan. At the very end here, I actually just had the idea. I wanna try this with a highlighter brush and just see what happens. Oh yeah. I think that's the way I'm gonna be using it, like as a blush topper. That's doing it for me right there. I liked both ways, but I think personally that's the way I'll be using it. Now that I have this on my arm, this with this might be a killer combo because this would just add some like sugary kind of notes in there. Ooh, that could be a good summer combo right there. I'll have everything I talked about today listed down below in the description box. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll have some of my other recommendations listed down below as well and pass a for sale videos. If you want more ideas for things I love, you can check out those videos. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.